Hey folks, I'm Carrie Wessinger, and I'm happy to talk about our work recently published in Evolution Letters. Hummingbird pollination is associated with reduced diversification in penstemon. This work is collaborative with Lena Heilman at the University of Kansas and Mark Rauscher at Duke University. Evolutionary transitions from bee pollination to hummingbird pollination are common in North America promoted by the efficient pollen transferability of hummingbirds. And a characteristic feature of these transitions is the evolution of bright red tubular flowers that produce lots of nectar. And we call this set of floral traits the hummingbird pollination syndrome. And not much is known about the macroevolutionary effects of transitioning from bee to hummingbird pollination in North America. Now within this flora, penstemon is the largest endemic flowering plant genus with nearly 300 species. Penstemon is ancestrally adapted to be pollinated by bees and there have been multiple evolutionary transitions to specialize on hummingbirds as pollinators, resulting in the repeated or parallel evolution of hummingbird syndrome flowers. This natural replication makes penstemon a really useful system for studying the effect of pollinator adaptation on species diversification. And today I'm going to discuss our recent work suggesting that hummingbird adaptation is associated with reduced diversification in penstemon. Now to understand the pattern of floral evolution in penstemon, we need an estimate of the phylogeny. And we've taken a phylogenomic approach. We densely sampled a large clade within penstemon and generated multiplex shotgun genotyping data. This is a type of RADseq data for each species. We then aligned concatenated sequences and inferred a maximum likelihood tree. But trees inferred using a different method, SVD quartets, were highly similar. So here I've marked hummingbird adapted species with red dots. The other species without dots all have the ancestral bee pollination syndrome. And what might jump out at you immediately is that most of these hummingbird adapted species seem to represent a separate origin of this floral syndrome, indicating there have been many, many transitions from bee to hummingbird pollination. We estimate at least 16 within our focal clade. Now, despite this large number of origins of hummingbird pollination, hummingbird pollination is rare overall, about 18% of species in this focal clade. So in other words, this seems to be a fairly tippy trait. So why are hummingbird adapted flowers rare in penstemon, given that these transitions have occurred so many times in this clade? Well, we think there's at least three possibilities. So the first possibility is that this apparently high rate of transitioning from bee to hummingbird syndrome in penstemon is opposed by an even higher rate of reversals from hummingbird pollination back to bee pollination. The second is that hummingbird pollinated species might have a low species diversification rate compared to bee pollinated species either because they have a lower speciation rate or a higher extinction rate. And finally, maybe there just hasn't been enough time in this recent radiation to have reached equilibrium levels of trait diversity across species. And maybe given more time, hummingbird pollinated species would become more prevalent in this lineage. So we tested these hypotheses using a modeling approach, using the BISI model of trait dependent diversification. This approach jointly models the tree and binary character data for each tip. So in our case, this is bee versus hummingbird syndrome scored for each species sampled in our phylogeny. And it fits six macroevolutionary rate parameters that are assumed to be constant over time. So these are speciation and extinction rates associated with bee versus hummingbird syndrome as well as rates of transitioning between these two character states. For these analyses, we rescaled branch lengths in our tree to be proportional to relative time. In other words, we made an ultrametric tree using BEAST2. Now, if you're familiar with these models, you know there are more complex versions that include additional hidden states 
and we explored these alternative models. And this talk is a little bit too short to really get into the um, results from these additional models. But the punchline is we found that this simpler, busy model shown here turned out to be the best description of our data. But you can find a full discussion of our hidden state models in our paper. So we estimated these rate parameters using MCMC implemented in RevBase, giving us posterior distributions of parameter values. And we found two main results. The first is that the rate of transitioning in the forward direction from bee to hummingbird pollination is shifted towards higher values than the rate of reverse transitions. So there's no evidence that the reverse transition rate is somehow higher than the forward transition rate. So this can't be the explanation for why hummingbird pollinated species are rare. And here's our ancestral character reconstruction under the BISI model, where I've colored internal nodes according to the posterior probability of being bee or hummingbird pollinated. And you can see that um, there's very little time spent in the hummingbird pollinated state, so there actually isn't much data that informs on the reverse transition rate. So this is why the estimate of this rate is fairly broad. But we suspect that the rate of reversals may be quite low. At least with respect to flower color, there could be genetic constraints on reversals. In previous work, we found that loss of function mutations to the anthocyanin pigment pathway accompany the evolution of red flowers in hummingbird adapted penstemons. And these loss of function mutations could be difficult to reverse and may generate a genetic constraint on this reverse transition rate. Our second main result is that hummingbird pollination has a significantly and substantially reduced net diversification rate compared to bee syndrome. And this is apparently driven by a reduced speciation rate associated with hummingbird syndrome rather than an increased extinction rate. We calculated the non-parametric FISI statistic that also indicates a significantly lower diversification rate for hummingbird pollinated species. So we infer that the high rate of transitioning from B to hummingbird syndrome, a net gain of hummingbird syndrome species is opposed by a low diversification rate for hummingbird syndrome species. Next we asked, would this low diversification rate be enough to keep hummingbird pollinated species at low frequencies in this group? So to find out, we calculated the relative proportions of bee versus hummingbird syndrome species that we would expect given these transition and diversification rates and enough time for the process to have reached an equilibrium state. And here I'm plotting the predicted proportion of species that should be hummingbird adapted at this hypothetical equilibrium. So at this equilibrium, hummingbird adapted species will be rare compared to bee adapted species, similar to what we currently see in the focal clade. So this means that if these transition and diversification rates were to stay fairly constant over time, hummingbird pollinated species should remain rare in penstemon. This difference in diversification rates leads to some really interesting hypotheses on potential mechanisms. And I'm just going to float one of many hypotheses you might be able to think of. So perhaps pollination by hummingbirds in North America increases genetic cohesion between populations because migratory hummingbirds perhaps move pollen greater distances than bees. And in theory, this increased connectivity between populations would reduce the opportunity for allopatric speciation. To test this hypothesis, we would need to compare genetic variation within and across populations for multiple bee and hummingbird pollinated species. And we're currently investigating this hypothesis using population genomic data from Penstemon. Now, before I go, I want to acknowledge this recent work by Luca and Pinnell that clearly describes the challenges of estimating diversification rate parameters from phylogenies, particularly when comparing different models of time-varying diversification.
And it's not immediately clear to us whether and how their important new results could invalidate our central finding that a trait-dependent diversification model was a better fit to our data set than a trait-independent model. But in either case, we're hopeful that new methods are being developed that would allow us to compare the effective speciation rate proposed by these authors for bee and hummingbird syndrome lineages in Penstemon. Finally, we wanna thank the folks who really helped inform our thinking about this project and helped move this research forward and acknowledge the NSF for our funding. So normally I'd ask for questions here, but I'll have to just sign off. So um, thanks for listening and um, goodbye. <laughs>